at how water, we looked at how water auto ionizes here, okay, and we've got this hydrogen ion, which for all practical purposes is just a proton, okay, and this is an example of a monoatomic ion. What I want to do is look at the, the effect of that when I put ammonia in water. Okay, we're going to put ammonia in water and see what we get. Okay. All right. So ammonia, remember, is one of the formulas you have to memorize in H3. And if we put nitrogen and three hydrogens together, and we did this yesterday, we have one hydro hydrogen with one electron, nitrogen with five electrons, and we, when we finish with the whole thing, we get a Lewis dot formula that looks like this. Okay? So we squeeze those electrons together and we get that Lewis dot formula. So in our auto ionization example for water, we ended up with some extra hydrogen ions. Okay? So let's put this ammonia in water where there are a bunch of these hydrogen ions floating around in there. Well, hydrogen ions don't really like to be by themselves. They really want those two electrons to be more stable. Okay, originally water, hydrogen joined up with oxygen in a way that gave hydrogen two electrons to be more stable. So this hydrogen would be a little more stable if it could have two electrons. Ammonia here has a couple of electrons sitting up here, long pair electrons. And what actually happens is, or what can happen in our example anyway, is this hydrogen can go up here and share those electrons. When we do that, we have a hydrogen ion attached and sharing those electrons right there. Okay. I will. Uh, not a parenthesis, but brackets. But yes, you're right. Okay. But and why would we put it in brackets? You don't. You have. Well, actually, there's another reason. I just want to know if you are following the actual reasoning here or not that, that I'm thinking of. All right, so this, this ammonia doesn't have any charges. It had an equal number of electrons and protons, so it doesn't have a charge. But the hydrogen had a charge. The charge doesn't just disappear. It's still there. It brought that positive charge with it to this whole structure here. This structure has an unequal number of protons and electrons. It has one more proton. Remember that hydrogen ion we said was essentially a proton. We've essentially added an extra proton to this structure to make this. So this has one more proton than the electrons that are in that whole structure. So that whole structure has a positive charge. Are you following me, following me here? Is anybody confused? You understand why we get that? I don't. You don't understand why we get that? No. Do you understand how we got the positive charge on the hydrogen in the previous example? No. Wait. No. And he, here, when we looked at how hydrogen leaves without its electron? All right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it has, it's a positive charged hydrogen, right? No electrons. This is essentially a proton. Because hydrogen is made, hydrogen atoms, for the most part, most hydrogen atoms are made of one proton and one electron. So if hydrogen leaves and leaves behind its electron, okay. what we have is a positively charged hydrogen.
hydrogen that is a proton. All right. When we first built our ammonia, the nitrogen had uh, five uh, valence electrons that we showed as dots. That's not all the electrons it has. That's just the valence electrons. This nitrogen had as many protons as electrons. Each of these hydrogens had one proton, one electron. So when we put it all together like this, there's an equal number of protons and electrons here. Okay? So this is a molecule, and a molecule is and he has an equal number of electrons and protons, okay? But this thing right here, remember, doesn't have any electrons. It has just a proton. If we take this and stick it on there, now I've got a structure that has more protons than electrons. Um, but, okay. That makes sense? There's a lot of steps in there, I understand. We have to do step A, step B, step C, and kind of keep up with all that in your head, right? It's a lot, a lot to kind of keep up with, but that, the way we get there is we're putting an extra proton on that structure. And that means that the structure then has one more proton than all the electrons. Okay, if we were to add up all the protons here, nitrogen has seven protons, each hydrogen has one proton, right? So that's one, two, three, four protons plus seven, that's 11 protons here, okay? But the electrons we have here we have a total of seven electrons on the nitrogen. Only three hydrogens brought electrons. That means we have ten electrons. There's an uneven number of protons and electrons on that structure. If I have more protons than electrons, I've got a positive charge. Does that make sense? So this then is another example of a polyatomic ion. It's a covalently bonded set of atoms atoms that are covalently bonded together with an unequal number of protons and electrons. Okay? And this has a special name too. It's called ammonium. And this is an example of a polyatomic ion. And by definition, a polyatomic ion is a covalently bonded group of atoms with an unequal number of protons and electrons. If it had more electrons, it, then protons would be a negative charge, yes. Okay. Or it might be two negative. It has two more electrons than protons. Okay? So this is a molecule. All right? This, isn't, this ammonia here is an example of a, mo of a molecule, okay? It's a group of atoms that are covalently bonded together with an equal number of protons and electrons. You following me now? Everybody following me? Tevin, you with me there? Okay. And that's all the material in this unit. Covered it all.